useful information to clarify some things that I hear uh, uh, a lot of questions about, you know, misinformation that might be out there. I'm going to try to clarify some of it, uh, present some new information, and then also present some uh, service information uh, that you might be useful to you in the future. Uh, my uh, uh, presentation will be uh, on my uh, uh, website on Tuesday, so uh, um, you don't have to worry about uh, taking notes or missing any information because you'll be able to get it done. So these are the topics I'm going to go over. Configuration variations of the transmission. Um, torque capacity. Oh. Uh, what's uh, available in terms of shifters. Uh, interchangeability of the transmissions. I get surprising questions about that. And uh, there's controversy or misinformation. Blue, black. blue tag and black tag, and I'll clear that up. in a definitive way. Uh, information about the speedometer sensor, they've been failing lately, at least I've been hearing about a lot of them, and uh, uh, how, uh, um, how, to, how to work with that. Uh, speedometer correction, if you do uh, changes to your gearing in the rear axle, and uh, uh, information on lubricants. Lubricants are always you know, topics of, this seems to be an endless discussion. <laughs> and then finally the CAGS. Uh, feature that uh, we all uh, uh, love to hate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the configuration list. This is a list from ZF's uh, parts manual. And uh, um, as you can see, there's uh, uh, six part numbers uh, for each model year. Um, the, uh, so you have to know the variation of the transmission. Uh, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna shop for one or replace it, you have to make sure you get the same one if you want it to match your car. Um, out over here uh, are the uh, torque ratings. Okay, so uh, one big dividing line here are the the early transmissions. You know, for the for, for both engines uh, have. Uh, a higher torque capacity than the late ones. And uh, this is maybe sort of interesting insofar as some of the early transmissions were very loud uh, in, uh, in yeah. uh Some people uh, uh, complained about the 90s, uh, uh, at least the 90s ER ones that I'm real familiar with, uh, with having too much, uh, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, rattling noise, uh, just gear noise of, uh, you know, you could, you could hear the transmission gears turning and you know it's the transmission because as soon as you put it in the clutch it goes away. So it's, you can make a real clear distinction between other engine noises in the transmission. So people complained about that and GM actually responded and uh, in 93, it's actually 93 and a half and of course up here there was no 89ZR1 uh, in production at least. Uh, but it's actually a 93 and a half change when they went to the 540 uh, newton meter transmission. The, this made it quite a bit quieter in neutral, more or less solved the problem. And uh, I'll mention later that, uh, uh, again, that it doesn't have, uh, this is not a durability issue, so there's no reason to worry about, you know, if you have one of these transmissions, or there's no reason to try to upgrade for more uh, uh, torque capacity. And, uh, and, and there's also, uh, again, uh, model year specific transmission part numbers here for the, uh, for the LT1 and L98 and LT4 engines. And as far as the torque goes, just running right into that. Uh, those are the two torque capacities and uh, I, I translated them into, uh, into foot pounds. And, and this is what I would say about it. Uh, I have never seen anybody have a problem with, with a failure or breaking this transmission with just raw torque, okay? I'm just having a, uh, you know, we've had engines, uh, you know, all the way up to 565 foot pounds of torque. And for, uh, for, for just the application of torque to the engine, uh, to the transmission, it holds up just fine. Uh, the only time I, I think you could just say in general that the transmission breaks is if you don't complete a shift correctly. And if you miss a shift, you're gonna, you, you, 
you know, of course you're going to break a, a, a synchro, or you certainly are highly likely to break a synchro and uh, or burn one. So uh, torque capacity is is really not an issue with the transmission. I mean, it seems like such a low number uh, compared to what the kinds of uh, uh, how much it's being overloaded. You know that you're putting it 565 through a transmission that's 400. Well, believe it or not, I've never seen a failure. And I've never heard of a failure, so uh, it's nothing to worry about. Uh, this transmission must be uh, way, you know, over designed because uh, the evidence is quite clear as far as the road because people aren't breaking them. Here's one thing that uh, that you need to know about the transmission. Uh, you might have heard about this. Um, some of the transmissions have a problem if you run them at high speed for a long time. Okay, uh, my my encounter with this was uh, uh, I uh, had a, uh, prepared a car for a customer, believe it or not, who was uh, moving to France, and uh, he wanted the car checked out before going to France, and uh, we went over it. And uh, the first thing he did when he got a hold of the car in France is he started driving it at 140 miles an hour. I don't know where you can do that around there, but, but he did it within hours after he got the car. And uh, it was a 94 and the transmission locked up on him. Okay. Uh, uh, Bill Boudreau is the, uh, you know, he's the, he's the technical expert on the internals of this transmission. Okay. That's where you find them at cfdoc.com. And uh, Bill uh, has, uh, you know, analyzed this problem, and he's found the root cause, and it, it has to do with uh, oil passageways that lead to the uh, reverse gear. Okay, on some cases they're not as deep or as as large as they should be, and the reverse gear can starve for oil. Um, he says that this affects all models of the transmission. At first. Uh, I had heard early on that uh, only late model transmissions like 94s and 95s are affected by this, but Bill says that any transmission can be affected and uh, uh, it's just a sort of a random thing where they didn't uh, provide enough lubrication. He would know more of the details about it. Uh, he has a solution, of course, because uh, if, if he's rebuilding a transmission, he always you know, upgrades it by, uh, by improving these lubrication passageways uh, uh, in, in the process. So he told me that, that if, if when it starts to go, uh, you do get some warning, but you have to pay attention to it right away. It'll start to make a screaming sound, a high-pitched squeal. And if, if you would drop, you know, if you get off the throttle, as soon as you hear that, uh, uh, he says you'll be okay. But if, you, if you're driving along trying to think about what that sound is, you've probably waited too long. You only have a few seconds to react. Or, uh, the transmission will sort of bind up to, to bind up inside, and it actually could lock up. Okay, so uh, and just let me before I leave this say that uh, I, I've heard of this maybe happening about eight times. Okay, this is a really low probability problem, and uh, uh, again, it only happens when you're driving uh, basically uh, uh, in, in some sort of a situation where you're always driving over you know 120 miles an hour, which might be like. Uh, uh, open road racing or uh, uh, driving uh, in some uh, western states uh, where I know you can get away with that. <laughs> About shifters, there's all kinds of shifter options. The original shifter uh, has 16 degree throws. Uh, an upgrade is to go to the Bill Boudreau shifter. Uh, this is the one I recommend. I, I like it for two reasons, uh, he, uh, uh, he keeps the uh, reverse lockout feature uh, in the shifter. Some other ones, you know, the Hearst that I'm going to go to doesn't have that. He keeps the reverse lockout feature and uh, it, it, he also retains, there's, a, there's a, a rubber bushing in the shaft of the transmission that isolates transmission noise from coming up into the car. And he, he keeps that so that it'll, it'll have the same sound. Uh, more about that later. Uh, so you get 25% shorter throws and uh, it won't uh, bring extra noise into the cabin. The Hurst shifter is, is, feels the same. Well, no, it's not. Let me go back. It's actually not. 
correct. But her shifter has 25% shorter throws, just like, you know, just this, this, the same kind of ratio change that Bill makes. Um, but it has a solid shaft, okay? And what will happen sometimes, I've had a couple people uh, go to this shifter, and uh, what they don't like is you start hearing more whine coming out of the transmission. And what it's doing is it's coming right up the shaft because the first just replaces the whole shaft with a solid shaft. And uh, you lose that, that rubber isolator in there. On the other hand, the her shifter is has a slightly uh, notchier feel to it, if that's what you like, because that rubber bushing's not in there. Uh, and, you know, on your sock shifter, right now you can go in the car and push on it, and you'll, you'll, you'll be able to tell that it wants to go. You can push it forward about a quarter inch pretty easy. That's the rubber bushing flexing. Um, the uh, uh, her shifter uh, will have a, a tighter click into gear because of that solid shaft. Again, this is all just personal preference. It depends on what you like. Then there was another shifter that came out. Uh, um, you rarely see them nowadays, the B&M shifter. It had really short throws. Um, I uh, personally uh, you know, don't like it at all. It's, it's so hard to shift. I suppose if I had arms twice as big as I do, uh, I wouldn't mind. But certainly, hmm. it's, it's, the, uh, uh, the short throws are nice, but there's so much more effort. It uh, actually, I think, slows you down if you're trying to shift really fast. And then finally, there's the uh, white racing product shifter. Uh, I have to mention this because uh, it's uh, part of the history. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, uh, Kurt White designed this a long, long time ago. And what's interesting about it is it's not really a shifter. It's, he changes, the, there are two fulcrum brackets that you install that will change the pivot point and uh, gives you like about 25% shorter throws. The, uh, the one feature about it that I don't like is that because they, he lowers the whole shifter by about an inch, the bottom of the shifter now drags on the rubber boot, the uh, dust and you know moisture boot that's on the bottom of the, uh, of, of, of the shifter. And uh, you, you pick up like this rubbery friction because it's pressing on it real hard all the time. You can put grease on it, but then after a year or so, the grease wears away and you get this kind of rubbery feel to the shift. So uh, um, it's not a uh, uh, one that I would recommend, but nonetheless, it's out there. Uh, Kurt's been uh, supplying them for a long time. I have no idea how many he still sells. I think uh, most people uh, are buying the hearse. I, I should mention about the hearse that uh, uh, the Hearst shifter is, was discontinued by Hearst years ago, but some company out in California bought the rights to it, and you can find them on the internet. Uh, and uh, um, they, they make a, you know, a, a perfect copy of it. They apparently have you know, all the, you know, all the uh, uh, design specifications for it. So those are still available, and of course you just uh, uh, call up Bill, and, uh, and he can do yours. Interchange. I get a lot of people calling me, uh, maybe it's not that interesting to this crowd, but a, a lot of people that are doing engine swaps call me uh, that they're shopping uh, for a transmission because they're putting an LT5 into, you know, a street rod or, or, or some other, you know, non-Corvette application. And uh, they, uh, uh, they, they've heard about different uh, uh, shaft lengths of the, uh, of the transmission. And sure enough, the, uh, the ZR1 models have a shaft that's about, you know, a little over an inch longer uh, than, the, uh, than the L98, LT1, LT4 models. So uh, if you're shopping for a transmission, uh, this is a, a really critical thing to know about uh, because uh, um, simply, the transmission simply won't fit. And you really don't want to do a conversion because the you know, the input shaft is longer, and the input shaft is, is the first part you put in the transmission when you're assembling. You have to disassemble the entire complicated six-speed transmission. I really don't think it's worth it. The only way it might pay off is if you had Bill Boudreau do it, because uh, uh, he's so, uh, he, he does it so much that he's uh, very efficient at it. Black and blue tags. Uh, there was a confusion uh, until recently, as far as I can tell, 
Some people thought that uh, that the uh, the blue tag transmissions were the uh, uh, were the six uh, were the 540 net, uh, newton meter transmissions. Okay, and there I, I talked to Bill Boudreau about this, and there's actually no correlation between torque capacity and the color of the tag. The color of the tag simply shows where it was made. Okay, uh, the blue tag ones were uh, uh, started. The manufacturing started around 93, uh, not around for the 93 model year, and those were built built in the U.S. So that's all that that uh, indicates: black tag and blue tag. So to a large extent, it's it's a meaningless designation or a meaningless thing to shop for, uh, because uh, uh, there's no difference in quality between the transmissions, and uh, and uh, so there's really nothing to be uh, uh, concerned about. And then speedometer sensors uh, for uh, for the ZR ones, and I, I, I have to apologize. I'm just not that up on the on, on the uh, on the Grand Sports, uh, but on the uh, on the ninety uh, on the ninety ZR ones, uh, the uh, the sensors have become somewhat of a higher failure rate. Uh, it seems to me like maybe one percent of them might be failing. Uh, I'm getting quite a few calls. And the problem with that sensor is it's a unique sensor for that one year. And GM discontinued it a long time ago, and none of the aftermarket companies have come in to make that sensor because it was a one, it was a two-year Corvette sensor. Okay, and of course they didn't make that many 89s either. So uh, um, uh, the, uh, the way to go with that is to uh, use the 91 and up sensor. Okay, it bolts right in. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a drop-in uh, replacement part. Except uh, you, uh, you have to change the electrical connector on the, uh, on the sensor because it, that was the variation between the two sensors, and uh, that's the part number for the electrical connector. So uh, uh, it's easy to use that one if. You know, if you want to go and uh, you know, kind of bite the bullet and have to cut the original connector off your car and put it in. Lubricants. Um, the uh, original lubricant was a Texaco 530 mineral oil, and uh, that was available, I think, until around maybe around you know nine about 2002, roughly. And uh, it was a special uh, blend with, uh, with certain additives deleted. Uh, you know, if you have certain detergent additives uh, and extreme pressure additives in the oil, uh, they'll attack parts like, like their dirt and try to, you know, and, and try to uh, uh, dissolve them. So uh, you can't just put uh, uh, any lubricant in the transmission. It has to be a lubricant that's friendly to these uh, uh, phosphor bronze uh, coated synchronizers. Um, there's the uh, GM recommend the, the ZF recommendation for our lubricant. This is in the ZF parts manual. They published this around 1995, and uh, they uh, they they recommended uh, for an upgrade lubricant to go to Castrol uh, RS uh, 1060. The big advantage there is it's synthetic. And when this first came out, I was recommending it to everybody that goes racing because you have the temperature, uh, um, you know, the higher temperature protection that you get from the synthetic. Uh, since then, of course, the years go by and uh, that lubricant's been discontinued. It was replaced by what they call Formula RS, which was also discontinued. And today they call it, uh, uh, well, they, they, the TWS is what they used, I'm sorry. And then uh, today, uh, if you go to the BMW dealer, which is the only place I believe this is available, they call it Edge Sport, and uh, it's the. Uh, you can also say it's the oil uh, for the M5 engine and on other engines too that I uh, can't name right now. Uh, that is the recommendation from ZF, and I believe it's kind of an old recommendation because uh, in today's world we have uh, manual transmission products that have the original viscosity that are synthetic. So for the street, this is the way to go. Uh, there's no point in putting in a, a higher viscosity 
uh, lubricant uh, if you don't need to. Uh, I believe that they only did the 1060 because that was the only synthetic lubricant that uh, you know that they could uh, recommend. So AMS Oil and Redline make uh, make products that are just you know engineered for the transmission. So uh, that's a, a a great primary choice. And then the other situation is uh, if uh, uh, you install a single mass flywheel and then you start running into a whole lot of transmission gear rattle. Uh, you can go to uh, Redline uh, Shockproof Heavy, and uh, uh, that'll quiet down the transmission by about 50%. So it's, uh, it'll, it'll help. It will not make the problem go away, but it does help. And uh, that's the capacity. You need to buy three containers if you're going to change the lubricant. And again, a reminder, uh, you, you know, it, it's a be a big mistake to put in, uh, uh, you know, 75 uh, W90 gear loop because uh, it has an EP uh, additive in there that'll uh, attack the uh, uh, the metal on the synchronizer. So uh, uh, that would uh, be a mistake uh, in, in the long term, I believe. And for speedometer correction uh, on ZR1s. Uh, you, uh, it's not possible to, to correct the speedometer uh, with the uh, engine control system. Okay, the signal goes through there, but they don't process it at all. So there's nothing that can be done with the program. Uh, the uh, the answer, and I'm not sure what what happens with L98 and LT1. Again, I gotta apologize to the Grand Sport guys. Um, I think it's the same situation, and uh, uh, the solution then is to. Uh, is to use, uh, you know, uh, just speedometer correction gears um, to, to, to solve the, you know, to resolve the issue. Uh, it's easy to put in a set of gears because uh, you don't have to take the extension housing off the transmission. The, uh, the gear is smaller than the, than the, the, uh, the output shaft shield, uh, seal. So uh, you can just uh, unclip it, it doesn't press on, it unclips, so it's easy just to push the clip out and uh, you slide it out the back of the transmission and it's easy to make a correction. Also, another uh, uh, possibility, I consider this a, uh, an alternative if you want to correct something besides 390 and 410 because uh, there aren't correction gears that I'm aware of for any of the other ratios anymore. Um, there's an uh, electronic box for, uh, for correcting the speedometer. And this one's a really good one because it's digital. It's, uh, you know, the early ones that they made years ago were analog and you had to adjust them and then they drifted over with time and temperature. Uh, this is a rock solid unit. Um, just, uh, I'll advise you that it's a good idea to put this corrector inside the car and not under the hood. Protect it from the weather because it doesn't come in a weatherproof box. So, so on the Grand Sports, you can. Okay. You can even, you can even do it with a little hypertech thing, which is not that good. Yeah. That's not the best thing those are good for. Uh, yeah. yeah, right, right. Okay, well, very good. Very good. I didn't know that. Thank you. And finally, for our friend CAGS. Uh, GM uh, says that it's for fuel economy. Uh, I guess they had to do it to, uh, you know, to get through the... Uh, the, uh, um, you know, to, to make the car legal, uh, you know, we hate it. Uh, you can drive around it on a stock calibration by just driving 19 miles an hour, and uh, uh, and then it will, you know, automatically skip the CAGs, okay? Um, it's uh, super easy to disable by just going under the car, and there's an electrical connector on the left side of the transmission right in the middle. You just unplug it. You should probably seal it up so dirt won't go in and, in, in inside there, and, uh, and and that'll turn it off. And then of course uh, uh, you can turn it off in the program too if you want to have a more refined approach and still uh, have the connector hooked up. So that's it. Um, like I said, uh, you can go to my website uh, on Tuesday and. Uh, if you want to get things like the ZF 
transmission chart or anything like that. All that will be there forever. So, um, let me see where we're at with time.